Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to another great segment in our Women Lead Online Forums. And tonight, uh, we bring you Sean Marie Turry and Truth is the New Black, which is a thought-provoking fireside-style virtual conversation series. It's real talk about business and life and career, about desire and disappointment, about truth and what it takes to create a life and a birth that you love. So let me tell you a little bit about Sean Marie. She is a multi-passionate, multi-talented business strategist who helps businesses get things done and helps leaders lead better. She is an irrepressible seeker of the truth. And as a master desire map facilitator, she's taken hundreds through her programs and she is the leader here, the facilitator, the, our perfect guide here tonight um, in Truth is the New Black. So Sean Marie, tell us what you have for us today. Can't wait. Thank you so much, Patty, my partner in crime. And thank you for that beautiful introduction, Patty. It takes one to know one, my dear. So uh, right back at you. And yeah, welcome everybody. If you're joining us live, I'm so happy to have you here. If you are watching the recording of this, thank you so much for, uh, for taking a look and being interested in what we're doing. And welcome to Truth is the New Black. And tonight I have the absolute pleasure of inviting a very dear friend of mine, Miss Naja Hayward with us. Uh, just an incredible woman, entrepreneur, leader, strategist, tea guru, uh, the founder of Naja Tea, uh, likewise a fellow multi-passionate uh, woman out in the world making things happen. Uh, she's the proud mom of a beautiful son. And I'm just so delighted to have you here tonight, Naja. Thank you so much for being my featured guest. It's so good to see you, my friend. Sean Marie, thank you for having me. I'm excited about what we're going to be talking about. Yes. You sent me an email, I think, three weeks ago, and you said, okay, so here's what we're talking about. And you laid it out. And I think I called you and I was like, Sean Marie, you might have the wrong person. <laughs> you might have the wrong person for that conversation. I'm not sure I'm the one. And then you you held my hand and walked me through it. And I was like, no, I, I'm absolutely the one. So I'm so glad to be here to be talking to you about about reimagining and about so much more. Yeah, thank you for that, Nasha. And uh, so our topic tonight is women reimagining power, perspective, and possibilities. And the reason this topic came to mind for me for a couple of reasons. Um, one is because I think it's very timely and I think that our possibilities are absolutely limitless. And I think the way that we get to that Limit, limitless possibility is through doing what we're doing tonight, taking a deep dive, going into the truth. Um, one of my, uh, a, a saying that I love and I use often is, if you want to find out, you have to go in. And that's really how I feel. But I want to also say, uh, to comment on what Naja was saying about, is she, was she the right person for this conversation? This topic, as do all of my topics, came about as a result of a conversation that I had with Naja. So Naja, you were 100% the right person for this conversation because it was in fact inspired by a conversation that you and I were having. So uh, yeah, so let's dive in. And I, um, before we before Naja and I kick off the conversation, I just want to let you know that this is in fact a conversation. And if you want to think of Naja and I as the container holders um, for a kind of facilitating and holding space for everyone to share and, and ask questions and give your perspective, uh, that's what this is really all about. And Naja and I are really here as guides to help facilitate and further and hopefully pull back some layers on some things that you've been wanting to be in conversation about. So- And Sean Marie is the angelic guide over here. And then I'm the one with the red horns over here. So bring it on. <laughs> Nasha, you definitely have both, as, as, as do I, dare I say. But, um, 
But Naja, let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, women reimagining. And I mean, we're coming up on the end of 2020. I think that we are all doing a lot of reimagining, but for tonight's topic, like we're talking about women specifically, re reimagining power and perspective and possibilities. So Naja, for you, like, where do you find yourself in this space of reimagining your life as a woman of color, a woman in business, a mom, a leader, and, you know, aren't they all kind of the same thing? And, and, and what role does power really play in that for you? Yeah. Well, first, I want to start with the, what you just said about this being the end of 2020, right? And I think so many people are having this conversation about, whew, I can't wait until 2020 is over. I can't wait to jump into 2021. I can't wait for everything that's happened inside of this year to just be done, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, we can look at any year. We can look at any year and look at the challenges that it brings us. And so I'm about what power is to me is when we make conscious decisions, no matter what's happening within our environment and no matter what's happening, when we control what's happening inside of here, then to me, whether it's, you know, I don't want to be flippant. I know a lot of people have been impacted by by the happenings of 2020. And there's a lot that has happened inside of this year. Um, but when I look at 2020, I look at, um, you know, I like to use the analogy of building a house. I love the idea of house building and, 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 and uh, architecture because, you know, you, there's a lot of roles that are played in, inside of building a house, but ultimately you have something that's going to be done and that's building something beautiful, something that you can live in that makes you happy. But before that thing is built, you got to tear whatever, whatever was there before you have to tear that bad boy down. And when you tear it down, there's a lot of debris and it's, it's, it's messy and it's ugly. And you, a lot of people, unless you are a visionary, you cannot see what's ahead of you mm -hmm. unless you see the plans that someone has created. And so I like to see 2020, there's so much about what has been happening in our country, on our planet that needed to be broken down. Like it needed to be put in to another place, right? And so if we can look at this as an opportunity for our country, from a health perspective, from a consciousness perspective, from a race relations perspective, from, um, from looking at you know, environmental perspective, if we can look at, at 2020 as an opportunity, that to me is what I see as power. So I saw 2020 as an opportunity. Before COVID even hit, um, I was in a in a job. Um, I have a 21 year old son, like you said, and my son is in his third year of college. Last year, I had a, a um, I was engaged. We had 65 people that had paid to go to Tulum to a wedding, and 27 days before that wedding happened, my fiance at the time broke off not only the engagement, but a but a our relationship. And so 2020, 2019 was my 2020, right? <laughs> like, you know, my son's going through a lot. He had a scholarship to Northridge. A day before my relationship breaks off, he gets a letter saying, sorry, you're missing a class. Like there were so many things happening. And so what I, what I really took that time to do was to look at Naja, every decision that you've been making over the last 23 years has been really about someone else, whether it's your son or mm. someone, your partnership, or, you know, but what is it that Naja wants? And I'm, I'm 47, I'll be 48 this coming year. And I think as mothers and as women, we are so busy making decisions for everyone else. And an element of that is when you choose to have a family and you choose to have children, that's a part of the that's a part of the agreement, right? Is you, you gotta give up a little bit of yourself because there are people that are depending on you. But then there's that other piece that you just kind of let go of yourself altogether. So for some women, it might look like physically, they let go of their, their physical self. Some people let go of their career. Some people let go of who they were emotionally, right? And so there were, I was like, trifecta, man, like let it all go. <laughs> and so, for me, this was a chance for me to say, 
hold on, who are you, first of all, before you even know what you want, you got to know who you are. And so I had to really look at, wow, who am I when I'm not in a relationship? Who am I when I'm not focused on raising another human being who's dependent on me financially and otherwise? Like, who am I? And so inside of that and there's so much more you know you and i we this could be like an all-day workshop fyi right this is so so there's going to be some gaps that need to be filled in but for sake of of time i'm going through this personal process right relationships broken up son's now coming home nausea who is nausea transition from you know being an entrepreneur to having a job to being an entrepreneur again and so i went back to um, to really looking at, and I love this word reimagining. I love, it's such a, it's such a powerful word when we can see it as, again, that word opportunity, right? As an opportunity. So I'm reimagining like, wow, I really, like I had mapped out the next 50 years with another human being. The first you know, the first half of my life was spent on one human being, and now I'm mapping out my life with another human being for the next 50 years. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, what am I gonna do now? And so and so I, I, I did a lot of journaling and writing and crying. Oh, a good cathartic cry is like the best gift we can give ourselves. And and so I went back to a phase of my life that was probably one of my most joyful. And that was when I owned my tea company. Um, and that was pre being a consultant and pre marketing guru and pre all of these other things. Like, you know, you know, JLo has, she's dancer, actor, you know, model, entrepreneur. And Naja has like tea person. I just, I was listening to you introduce me. I'm like, oh, wow, I have a lot, a lot of hyphen, hyphenates. But before many of those hyphenates, I was the tea lady. And that time really kind of encapsulated who Naja is, which is um, at the core of who I am, it's about wellness, wellness of our body, mind, and spirit. And so I decided to relaunch my business. And, and I'm relaunching as a different woman, a different phase of my life, looking at all of these young millennials out, entrepreneurship is like kind of the thing now, but when you and I were just starting out, like everyone was not an entrepreneur. Everyone is an entrepreneur now. And so I'm watching these innovators and, and young people and I'm like, okay, okay, this is, this is, this has to be not only Nausea T 2.0, but this has to be Nausea 2.0. And so for me, when we look at power, my power inside of this phase of my life, life has been about releasing who I thought I was without shame or blame, right? Releasing what I thought I knew without letting go what I knew. And so it's like this dance of allowing the most vulnerable parts of me be exposed to bring a whole new part of who Naja is going to be. So I'm just FYI, the whole reimagining thing has not happened. It is happening. It is happening. I am in process. And so, um, and so I think, I think that, you know, it was like a three part question. Um, the reimagining piece, when we can do it in a way that releases ego and embraces um, and embraces vulnerability, to me that becomes powerful because it's like that Marianne Williams Williams saying, when you let your light shine, you allow others to shine. Well, the light shines when you are in your truth. The light shines when you are being authentic. The light shines when you're like, here I am, teach me what, let me be both teacher and student. And so that's where I am. <laughs> so that's where I am. And yes, it's, you are. You know, and I, I was about to say it's scary, but it's not scary, actually. It's, it's, it's um, exciting. It's exciting. And it's exciting because there are, there are a lot of variables that I'm uncertain of, and I'm okay with the uncertainty. Um, I think, you know, there are phases of our life that we are meant to, do you remember that book, The Giving Tree? I love yes. that book. Shel Silverstein. 
ab- such a beautiful book about the stages, Gorgeous. right? And and I think that building part, that building part where he's preparing for his his future wife, and and he's that's a critical part of who we are to become. But that's not all of who we are to become. And so and so I did so much of those phases of my life that allow me to now, um, so financially we, for me, let me, let me say, I'm, I'm going to be very clear that what I'm saying is very real and true for me, but a, a, the conversation is also about perspective, right? And so this is yes. my perspective based on my experiences. So, so those phases of my life have prepared me to do what I'm doing without a whole lot of fear, if that makes sense, right? So I've set up my foundation fairly solid so that now I can explore nausea 2.0. Right. And, and I really, I appreciate you saying that nausea, what, or what you said when you were introducing where you are right now. And that is that this is your experience and everybody is having their own experience, which we've actually talked a lot about on, uh, on truth is the new black. You know, I'm going to pause for one second. Patty, I'm getting some feedback. Do you hear that as well? Yeah, it's, unfortunately, it's Nasia's microphone. It's oh, it's my, my, yeah. It's my microphone? Oh, I don't have a mic on. I'm just using my, um. Yeah, so I think it picks up everything. So the only people unmuted were you and, and Nasia. And actually, Patty, it's Nasia. Oh, I'm sorry. That's it's okay. okay. I'm sorry, I'm saying it's okay, Naja. I put it. <laughs> <laughs> it is okay, Patty. <laughs> Perspective. I have been called worse, sister. I have been called worse. <laughs> so, so, Patty, would it help if, if uh, and Naja, I don't want you to have to keep muting and unmuting, but, but does that help, Patty, if she mutes her mic for a moment? Okay. So, but Naja, what I wanted to say was, um, actually, let me re- regroup my thoughts here. Um, oh, is that the way that I have experienced you is, and, and I and I feel like when you were talking about, you know, when we shine, we give others, you know, permission to shine or we show them that they have that in them as well. And I think too, that's what, that, that is what so often the attraction is about. You know, I'm really clear that when somebody is really attracted to me or they're like, oh my gosh, you've, you know, you've got all these things or whatever it is that they're drawn to, And, you know, and it's, there are times that I just received that Mm -hmm. and it's really lovely. And uh, I've done, you know, I mean, all the work that I've done over the course of my lifetime, like I'm also able to keep that in perspective. And what I, what Mm -hmm. I really try to do is keep negative feedback as well as positive feedback in Mm -hmm. check, Mm -hmm. right? Like Mm -hmm. just keep that in perspective and. Uh, And when there is, you know, a wave of accolades or compliments, it's like, that's really lovely. And yet there's still a lot of work to do. Or if somebody has something shitty to say to me, or they didn't like this, or they didn't like whatever it is, um, you know, I'm like, okay, is there something there for me to learn? Is that even mine? Like, is that stuff even mine? Does that even belong to me? Sometimes that stuff is a little bit harder to push away or keep at bay than it is to manage the accolades like the accolades and that that feels very easy to manage the the harsher stuff at times is is a little tougher but again i think it's all about perspective but what one of the things that i think you're doing that is really worthy of acknowledging is that you are revisiting and reimagining this same company right and so many times like there's something that we want to revisit but there might be this notion or this belief that we have drummed up like oh my god I've done this already I should have been here already like if I try to do this again what is that going to look like what are my clients going to think are they going to even want to you know dance with me again or revisit this reimagination with me again and I think that it really takes courage you know Mm -hmm. it's like you said like this not only could this be a workshop nausea this like this could be a weekend workshop or a series of workshops Mm -hmm. um and like I said in the description, like we're not going to solve the world's problems today or unfortunately, <laughs> um, you know, or, or create cold fusion or what have you. But uh, what we are going to do is we're going to open up the space and have some really honest conversation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and so from the perspective of 
power. Mm. What I also wanted to speak to with that, and I'd love to hear, you know, uh, if some of the other women have had an experience of that recently, or, uh, you know, if anything is coming up for you that you might want to share and get some feedback on, or just give your, give your perspective of something that you might be going through. But I've also, especially this year, and, and Naja, I too had some things happen in 2019 that I feel prepared me for what happened in 2020. And it was uh, so brutal. And uh, it was nothing like, nothing in my like personal relationships, but um, a project that I was working on that I had really given an incredible amount of time to um, that I had been longing to have happen for years was mm -hmm. kind of finally coming to fruition. And just like with what you were saying, with your son and your engagement, like on a dime, it ended, like the rug got pulled up from underneath me with virtually no explanation. Mm. Um, and it was gut wrenching. And that same day, my husband was let go from his position as mm. the director of marketing for a company that he'd been with for, I think, about three years mm. with the expectation that he was being groomed to be VP of marketing. Again, no explanation uh, on the spot. Um, he definitely, he got a severance and, and all these other things, but it was like, it's at that point, it's not about the money, right? Mm -hmm. It's about like regrouping, kind of picking yourself up off the floor and just being like, what happened? So the same day in December, five days before Christmas, John and I were both hit in the head with a two by four. Mm -hmm. And so going into 2020, it was like, bring it right? Mm -hmm. Like come what may. So mm -hmm. we definitely felt um, like we kind of come out of a storm as we were entering into another one. But what I want to say about 2020 specifically and power for me is as the pandemic was coming on and George Floyd's murder and mm -hmm. the Black Lives Matter movement was finally getting um, some real acknowledgement and real mm. attention yeah. um and and the movement was like other people were were waking up to mm -hmm. uh to having thoughts and feelings about this and all of the literature and the books and the conversations that were coming out what i thought was interesting is that for me where my power was coming from and Naja, you and i have talked about this was in um really letting that <clears throat> letting my experience around everything that was happening uh letting it just be inside me mm. and letting that kind of cultivate and cook and um and do its work internally mm. and i and i opted to say less oh yeah and so my experience this year specifically with power has been to say less, do less, um, be less active. It, like you were saying, Kay, um, I've done very little outing uh, since March um, mm -hmm. and it's been hard. You know, mm -hmm. I miss my friends. I miss my family. I told mm -hmm. John a few days ago, like Christmas is questionable for me about mm -hmm. being around family. My nephews are in town with their girlfriends and they're flying in from Hawaii and Portland. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm not mm -hmm. feeling it. I'm not sure that that's the best idea. So, mm -hmm. um, so I just feel like this harnessing and, and, and letting this power inside of me build and healing what needs to be healed in my own home under my own roof, purging and getting rid of things and acknowledging you know, the things in myself that aren't working and the things in myself that I want to improve and reconnect with and pay attention to. And so the idea of, and, and I do want to say also that, you know, my sisters were out there marching and I wanted to be out there with them. And I, I opted not to, I felt like my, my place, and it would have been different last year, had this happened the same time last year, this would have been a different conversation for me, but my place was here mm. and that was hard because I, I didn't want 
anyone to think that I didn't care or that I wasn't making my point of view and my perspective completely clear. But I really just decided, you know, if somebody wants to know, they can ask me. Mm. And I had a lot of people say, where are you? You're not on Facebook. You're not on social media. Is everything okay? And in those instances, I shared very honestly where I was at and people disagreed and they're not in my life anymore or whatever, whatever changes needed to put, take place there. But yeah, I just, power is not always about being out there and what you're doing out in the world or for the sake of others or for the sake of performance. And, and, and sometimes it's even an unconscious performance. Mm. Right. I feel like we've been so I love you saying that 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 is the truth. Right. Especially if that's where you have for so long. Um, that's the perspective you've come from anyway, is the performance without even realizing it. And it's self-protection or whatever the reason. Yes. Um, what I love about what you're saying, Sean Marie, is if we look at everyone who's on this call right now, we all have probably dealt with this year in differently. Right. And some, and we, so, you know, um, first of all, I want to acknowledge that there's two people on this call right now that when George, the George Floyd, um, I hate saying incident, when, when George Floyd's death came about and, and the dust was, when the dust was being kicked up all over about Black Lives Matter. And, and I, I'm so excited about this as an opportunity for Black people to have a voice. Um, I wanna make sure that this time does not become a trend. We've had trends of this happen historically, and now we need this to be a part of um, the culture of our country. But you and Kim, were the two people in my life that reached out to me and like, hey, how are you? And, um, and to me, it was the most beautiful white women, black women, white men, black men, everyone. We, we can't just say this is about black people. This is about people. Everyone is having an impact from what's happening as we all should. White people have learned to be white just as much as black people have learned to be black. And inside of that, there have been conversations in our home that have, that have created a script for how we're all living today. And so we're a lot of us are following these scripts. Some are compassionate, some are, you know, there's lots of stories happening. And so when we have compassion, first and foremost for ourselves, you being very clear right now, I need to be quiet. That's what feels real. That's what feels like it's honoring what I need before I go out and, and take a stand or go out and march for, you know, this, any cause. But, but as, when we all can just really get solid in, let me pause. Like if that's the very first thing that happens, let me pause so I know what this anger is. Let me pause so that I know what this sadness is. Let me pause so I can know what this confusion is. Let me pause so that what my response is coming from is, is doesn't have to be about being an educated response, right? That, that initial response is, is, is genuine generally. But, but, but let me just pause because then I can see you for the for the thing that you're going through, even if it's not my thing, like even if I don't understand it, even if it's not in alignment, I know that it's coming from a, a place that now we can, I think we just all have to be open. We all have to be open to the lessons of what 2020 is all about. Because we all have lessons. This is not a black issue. Like we have to stop seeing this as, uh, you know, George Floyd as, as a, it's not a black issue. It's everyone has a part to play in what's happening. And so um, we had that conversation about you pausing and stepping back and, and just saying, you know, I don't want any, you were concerned about what people thought. And um, I think it's the most beautiful thing that you do when you, when you pause first. So then you know what you're bringing to the table is, um, is coming from a good place. So, mm. yeah. And Naja, and thank you for that. And, and, you know, it, I was concerned until I wasn't. Yeah. Right? And, and I, and I think that that is, 
that's the growth, like for, for all of us, like we, um, the things that we want to work on, um, you know, caring about what people think or, you know, being more present or saying no to more things or saying yes to more things that, that we are the way we are until we aren't, Mm. until we have that moment of self-actualization or just giving a shit enough to, you know, again, do the work. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I don't, I think for me, you know, it's, it's not about being serious all the time, but it is about being present. Like Mm -hmm. for me, I just want to be present and increase my, my tolerance for how uncomfortable that can be, you know? And so I had to increase my tolerance for how uncomfortable it felt to be, um, to be quiet and to listen and to hold the space for others and to be, um, to be a champion for the work that was going on and to be a conduit uh, in my own way, energetically and and through not being uh, so attached to what people thought or or making it in any way about me, uh, Mm -hmm. which I think is part of our human nature. Like that, that that is the nature in all of us that I think we really get to work with on a daily basis. Somebody cutting us off on the freeway, it's like, and we get pissed off or, you know, we get angsty. It's like, oh, that's right. That wasn't really about me. Like he doesn't, or she doesn't, or they don't even know me. Right. But we like are, so that, that thing that we get to work on. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and like you said, like that change, like that's power and it's powerful, Mm -hmm. you know, in, in, from the perspective of, um, you know, what do they say? It takes more, it takes more energy to start a train than to keep it going. Mm. Um, You know, so sometimes just that quiet momentum, like we, we need that pause so that we can, you know, build that momentum for, for what's coming. I think it's really the only time that you can start to reimagine possibilities, right? Is in that space. Like, if, if you're still working in the same way, if you're still doing the same thing you've been doing forever, there is no space for reimagining, not reimagining, you know, who you are as a, a, a white woman in a time where you are being highly like, you know, I, I feel sorry for anyone named Karen. Let me just say that. <laughs> Yes. Oh, okay. I think, I think, yes, I, I, so do I. Um, or, you know, if you're a black woman dealing with the angst and the heartache of it all, or if you're, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you can't reimagine the next phase of it inside of a career, inside of being a better parent, inside of being a better partner, inside of, you know, just shifting for your own well-being. You can't reimagine what that can even look like unless you pause and, and unless you stop and unless you observe and unless you mm-hmm. take, you know, look backwards for a moment and, 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 and take um, inventory of your life, like those things are required in order for that next phase of reimagining. Um, and I, I look a part of the, what I love about, I talked about millennials and kind of being an entrepreneur at this phase and stage of my life and seeing all of these young entrepreneurs is that there, I, I was, I was them. I'm like, they're hustling and they, they're like badass and they're like, they're not stopping for anything because it's not their time to stop. Right. For, for many, I mean, I'm making broad generalizations, but it's not their time to stop. It's their time. And, and yet there will be a time when they look back on how everything that they've been doing has affected and impacted and created who they are today. And so we, as women over a certain age, have the beautiful benefit of that. To me, I think, um, you know, when we, when we define power, all of these things, when we do it in the most, most vulnerable, authentic, um, and yet personal, personally accountable way, um, it, it makes us powerful beings. And, and that excites me. That excites me as an almost 50 year old woman. You know, I, I'm, uh, I've shared that my grandmother is 91. Um, I am her caregiver, her power of attorney. She raised me. And so I, 
she gave me everything that she had as a young girl. And now I'm giving it all back to her because mm. she has Alzheimer's dementia and, and I, I'm her caregiver. And so I look at, I have this 21 year old son. I'm this almost 50 year old woman. And I have this 90 year old woman in my life. Right. And so I have these perspectives that give us generationally what may happen at different stages of our life. And as I look at the possibility of, of, of me being a 90 year old woman and my grandmother, the conversations that we have about the 91 years of her life and her regrets, but also her, 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 you know, what's made her proud about her life. And she's thinking all the time about so much. Um, and, and, and so we're going to do that at every stage, you know, we're always, we're, we're, I think, what is it? Every seven years we go through mm -hmm. like a spiritual, like every seven years. And so, um, these conversations are critical to have people in your life, particularly women, particularly women of a, a like, you know, similar values or see like minds, as they like to say, when we have these conversations, when I'm hearing you, you're sitting here interviewing me, I'm listening to you and I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I got you. Oh yeah, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh -huh. you're massaging my brain, you know? Um, and, and so I think that, the more the more we can do this have these conversations the more we can be quiet in our own space i live on my i live i live by myself right now let me tell you i love it and i hate it <laughs> it is so wonderful because there's all of this like i felt like my my brain filing cabinet was just overflow like i couldn't even shut that bad boy my brain was just overflowing with everything that was going on but this last six months of me basically living by myself my file cabinet's kind of neat and organized and everything is like a's and b's and see you know, everything is <laughs> i'm like wow this is this is what having mental space feels like <laughs> and good, i and i it's I, a good time to do that it is, but we're so busy filling our time with more people or filling our time with more activities or filling our time, like we're busy filling our time. Like I could easily have someone come and live with me or have a lover who's keeping me busy or, and I'm like, no, no, this is, this is your reimagining time. This is your quiet time. This mm. is your, this is your next phase time. And I'm giving myself permission for that. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, I'm so happy to be, you know, part of uh, the massive amount of people that are getting to experience this reimagining and reawakening and re-emerging of you and and what you are up to. And I think it's a beautiful thing. Like I said, it really, it just, for me, it just plants such an important message that it is never too late. You can revisit something as often as you want and uh, and it just like if that's really what is sincere and true and speaking to you, you know, and I and I wonder how many, uh, you know, of the other women on the call are having these kinds of experiences, you know, I'm certainly reimagining I mean it's been a very quiet year for me professionally. And that has been again it's it's I've just had to increase my tolerance for how uncomfortable that has yeah. been but I can feel that that veil between where I've been and what's next for me. Like, um, you know, like the girls that take those veils off, like I, I don't have very many veils left um, mm -hmm. between what's happening next. And it just like every time one of those layers gets removed, like I can see it more and more clearly. And, and Naja, you are being an example of that to me. You know, mm -hmm. what it looks like to go back to something that you've done more than once and say, oh, like you said, like the, I'm Nausea 2.0, this is Nausea T 2.0 or 3.0 or 3.5 or, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, that's right. Like this is just the next version of this really beautiful work mm -hmm. that I have to do out in the world. But this year has been about the work, like this work, you know, the, mm -hmm. this deep work uh, of solitude and it's a little lonely and it is scary. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just, you know, doing, the best that I can to just be really present for it and and reimagine 
uh, what 2021 is going to look like because it's a lot different than what I thought it was going to look like last January. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and if if anybody um, on our call would like to share or has an experience that they want to bring, um, you know, we Naja and I would really love to hear from you and um, yeah, or if you have any questions or you know the the you know, this is our time, so. And I think while we're waiting for anyone who wants to share anything, you know, Seth Godin says- I oh, love Seth Godin. I love Seth Godin. Um, he and Elizabeth, uh, Eat, Pray, Love, Elizabeth- um, Elizabeth Gilbert. Gilbert, thank you. They both said, said in a different way, basically leave leave the past behind, right? Don't try and match your greatest work of art by redoing your greatest work of art. And so I, 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 that when I heard that, I was like, ooh, maybe I shouldn't do nausea tea again because that was, my, you know, that was from my past. And I thought, we know when something is, when we're done with something. We know when we're done with a relationship. We know when we're done with a business. We know when we're clean and we can move on to whatever the next thing. And I think we also know when, you know what, there's still something there. There's still some goodness that can be extracted yes. from that thing in which we have done previously. And for me, nausea tea was not done. Nausea tea was never really done. Um, it really wasn't. I had customers who were literally holding onto my ankle like, don't leave, no! <laughs> <laughs> they would not let me go, literally. But, but as a business, um, you know, in in all transparency, we just had a five figure holiday season, which was really good. Like, like to have a five figure. We talk so much about six, seven, eight, nine figures. I'm like, I'm happy as hell that we had a five figure <laughs> holiday. You know, these last three weeks, I'm like, wow, we're a hundred percent online. Um, but you know, I had nine employees working for me. We were in multi, multi six figures. We, you know, we were all over from, you know, the media, we did so much. And yet the humility of, I pack my own tea, you know, I ship my own tea. I'm, I'm, I, I, it is me. I mean, I have two people that support me, but, you know, but to start from the ground floor of something that you've already created takes humility, but I think it's also such an exciting time because I always say we all start at zero. Every last one of us starts at zero. Well, when you're re doing a reover, maybe you start at four or five, <laughs> you know, and so, so you have a little more, you're a, step, a few steps ahead, and yet when you want to revisit something and do it better, whatever better might look like for you at the time, it, it's, it's just you do have to humble yourself to um, to it looking different. And so this has definitely been that for me. And and when I heard that Seth Godin quote and even uh, Elizabeth Gilbert, her TED talk about, um, about uh, Eat, Pray, Love and how she thought that the best was behind her. Well, only we know that. And I think the gauge of that is, am I complete? And so, mm. so if you feel complete, then great. Let's move on to and, and become a creator of something new. We are, we are all creators. Um, let's embrace the creativity. And if that creativity is revisiting something or recreating, you know, creating something new, then wonderful. Yeah, and Nasha, and I, you know, I, a, a quote that comes to mind, um, John wrote me a really beautiful birthday letter and he inclu included this quote in it. Um, but it really wasn't a quote, but rather a story. But um, people used to ask Picasso, like, how do you know when a masterpiece is done? Or how do you know when it's done? Whether it was his pottery or his paintings. And he said, oh, you're never done. You just pick a time to walk away, right? But, but if, that is in, if that is the case, which I believe it is, then you also know when it's time to revisit it, right? Mm -hmm. and, it's, and I think that it's really an intuitive gut check kind yeah. of thing. But the only way I believe that we really get those messages and that we really hear the sound and the tune and the tone of our own intuition is when we are present for it, right? Mm. When there's so much 
when we are so distracted by, um, you know, drama or what he's doing or what she's doing or what people think of us, like we've talked about, you know, or am I being a big enough influence or, you know, did I get enough likes on that post? Um, mm -hmm. We can't hear it, right? We just can't hear it. So we just, you know, and that's not to say that we can't hear it when we're busy and active and have a lot going on, but there is that, you know, it's like those really beautiful singing bowls and those tuning forks, like there is a pitch and a tone to our own intuition. And, and we have to be present for it. And I think in addition, I also want to say, I think we have to invite it in. You know, we have to, we have to make room and initiate that opening and, and invite it in, you know, at least my intuition, you know, doesn't come at me with a baseball bat. I wish it did sometimes, but like, you know, like drop a house on my head kind of obvious, but my, my intuition is much more subtle. It's like, oh, we'll wait. Like, it's just, it's like, you go, you go do that thing. You go waste your, like, we'll wait. Like, we'll be here. Listen to me. I'm talking about my intuition. Like there's multiple of it, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. So I love it. I love it. I love it. So is there anybody that would like to hop on and just let yourself be seen and take a minute and yeah, let us see you and hear you? I'm not opposed to calling someone out, just FYI, <laughs> just FYI. I see all of you and I am not opposed to calling you out. <laughs> Cause you, you're friends now. Now we're, we're amongst family and so family can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to share that, you know, for, for me, it's been a time of self-awareness and really getting to know myself. Mm. I think this has been a, you know, the situation for 2020, there's like challenges and then opportunities. Mm. And I think one of the ways of looking at it is, yes, there have been challenging times, but those are also opportunities that one can create out of the challenges. And I think with situations like this, when we have these challenges, it really helps us to really go within ourselves and do some introspection and really find out what's really, you know what, what's really a priority, what's really important to me. And for me, <clears throat> excuse me, for me, what it really created was an opportunity for me to look at my, my tribe, if you will, to look at the people that I affiliate with and associate with, the ones that say are my friends and those that are acquaintances and to see who's reaching out and who isn't and to see who you really are, where you are as an individual, where you can contribute to somebody's life. So mm. I think through that whole process, what has happened is it helps one to grow and to really mature. And also what it does when, from the perspective of being self-aware is that instead of reacting and responding is just to be with oneself and to just be with myself and just to be present and to, to let those feelings kind of just kind of not fester, but more si just simmer. And out of the simmering will come transformation and you will become a better person. Mm. It's the whole process. And <clears throat> excuse me, for me, I feel that we're all a work in progress. And these challenges will only help us to be more mature, help us to be more compassionate, which is an area that I, I find, including myself, that women that, that are very uh, in tune to being a, a, very um, intuitive or very, uh, what I should say, I guess what I'm trying to say is women that are very um, motivated and high, strong, want to be type A personality, want to get things done. Sometimes we don't have the, the patience and the compassion with ourselves. Mm -hmm. and we don't have it with other people. So downtime, it can be very therapeutic. You know, although it does have the concerns that we raised earlier that you ladies have raised in regards to business and, and other challenges that we have, we can also use this as an opportunity to really do some self-development and self-awareness and really get to know who we are, who are we're associated with, how we can contribute to other people's lives mm. in a really significant way. Hashtag wisdom. 
Excuse me? I didn't hear. I said hashtag wisdom. That's okay. wisdom. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's wisdom. It really, it's, and it really is important in such a time as this for us mm. to step into that. Mm. As such a time as this, Liz, absolutely. Yes. You know, Liz, I and I, I think I included this in the write up something about, um, you know, just us supporting one another and 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 being champions for one another and uh, being here to listen to one another. And I heard Glenn Close recently on a podcast. She was being interviewed about her new movie called Hillbilly Elegy which uh, did not get good reviews, but which I thought was really interesting because I was deeply, deeply moved by this movie and these performances. Um, and That's it's a true right. story. Yeah, you, okay. Uh, it's a true story. Um, some of these people are still living. It is written from the perspective of the sun. And there were so many lessons in this for me, but, but one of the things that I thought was Two things I think are interesting. One from the perspective of, <clears throat> excuse me, the reviews. Um, it's a dialogue driven movie. Uh, there are not a lot of, like there's no shoot 'em up. There's not, um, the highs and the lows are very subtle and they're very sincere. And I just felt like those nuances and the beauty of that had to have been missed on these critics. I'm like, I don't like, it just, it felt like because of the lack of drama and the lack of obvious tension, um, because even the, even the tension was, um, it was quiet. Like you had to listen for it and feel your way into it. And it was uncomfortable. So you had to be present and feel yourself in this movie from my perspective. So that was one thing I thought was interesting that just like, because it wasn't stimulating enough um, that's what I felt the, the negativity was toward. But Glenn was talking about in her early career, um, she was a stage actress for the first 10 or 20 years really of her career. And her first movie was The World According to Garp, another brilliant movie. But she was talking about that she was an understudy for this pretty big play. And the director of the play uh, basically pulled her aside and he said, hey, don't leave at the break um, because they did two shows on Sundays and Saturdays. He said, don't leave at the break. I'm thinking about pulling the lead actress and putting you in. He said, so if you hear from me at the break, then you're in and she's out. I mean, just like that, just like what Naj and I were talking about, that Band-Aid being ripped off, that like, holy shit moment, my life is about to change, her life is about to change possibly. So sure enough, she gets the nod, she gets the tap and she's replaced. And this other actress, this woman was a bit more of a seasoned actress. Um, uh, this was uh, Glenn's first uh, really big professional play. And she, next thing she knew, she's got the lead um, or she's got the role. So she comes in from the understudy to this role, this other woman is out. And this woman had left her a note and in, in the entertainment industry, they say break a leg and all these other things. But what she did is she wrote her a note and she said, be brave and be bold. And Glenn spoke to how gracious and graceful that was and what an example it was to her of what it looked like for a woman to support another woman. And she also knew that it is agonizing to have that taken away from you um, and to have it done like, again, what Naj and I were talking about, like without notice, without any expectation, without explanation, uh, it is brutal. And yet this woman knew, like she could see that Glenn had this light and this ability and she was able to process her own feelings to whatever degree that was going on for her privately, but that she had the grace and the, and the knowingness of what it meant to be a woman in this, in that industry, especially at that time and do something so loving for her. And Glenn spoke to the fact that that affected the way that she was right with other women. 
And so it goes. And I think that when we do that for one another and for ourselves or when we are affected by somebody in that way and, and somebody does that for us, it, um, the ripple effect of that is just, it is, I, I think it's immeasurable. I really do. But, but Liz, I just, I, I want to second what Naja said, just your wisdom. Um, that was so beautiful. And I'm delighted to be in this community with you, Liz. I really am. Thank you. And the same goes for you ladies. This was really remarkable, the shares. Mm. And I, I, I think, you know, what you're saying about what this actress, um, actor did with Glenn Close, I saw the movie just last night, I have to say, and it was, it was emotional on a lot of levels. Very good. I yes. think you should see it. I didn't know it had bad reviews. Um, um, but I think what that actress did was in her, in the, in the space of her pain. So if we, if we look at our, what's happening in the world today, in the space of, of anyone who's in, that's my dog. He's, he's, a, he's like, and all right, Naja, mom, it's naja Kim, Kim just said good night. Oh, good night, my love. Thank you for being here. I'm so glad that you were here. And I know that we, we have to, to end, but I, you know, what that actress did at that moment was um, in the space of her pain, she was able to still hold space for another human being. And I think if we all can do that in what's happening in the world today, you know, if you're doing well, just know that there are people that are struggling. If you're, you know, if you are privileged, just know that there's someone who isn't. And how do we bring compassion and not feeling sorry for anyone? This is not about, this isn't about acting weird. <laughs> you know, it's not about like, oh my, no, it's not about that. It's about still standing firm in your position in the world while also being compassionate about someone else's. And I think that was a beautiful display of that, the actress to Glenn Close. Mm. And, you know, I, I, wanna, I wanna wrap it up with this and Naja, um, before we go, I'm gonna also ask if you would let everybody know maybe in the chat how they can reach you or, or learn more about Naja T or have a conversation with you. Um, Naja is much more than just a, a tea guru and an amazing entrepreneur. She's, um, I highly recommend that you get to know Naja if you don't know her already. But uh, with regards to the movie, and I think that this really speaks again to, you know, power and perspective and resiliency and um, this idea of reimagining. But um, the essence of the story, again, it's written from the perspective of the sun. And his mother is a drug addict and alcoholic, and he is, uh, he's put himself through school and he, it's, it's interview time and he's being interviewed by these law firms, um, really hoping to get um, picked up by one of these firms and it's a really big deal and she uh, ov overdoses on heroin and he comes home and his interviews are now at risk. And um, he, he puts down this money to get her into rehab and um, she ends up not going, but there's there, anyway, there is this moment where she's asking him to stay. And, and it was so profound for me when we are faced with those moments of, I am, there's something that I need to do for myself. Like I wanna set a boundary and I want to make a decision that is best for me. And this person who I love, and it could be a client or a family member or a sibling or a child um, is saying, please don't go do that thing that you are probably meant to do, that you really wanna do, that you at least need to explore, even if you fall flat on your face. And I think that we've all had those moments where we are at that intersection of, do I go and do this thing um, even though this person, this other being is asking me not to. And that, you know, I think that it's that kind of incident that causes these fractures, you know, in our beingness and it, and it can create this kind of wounding. And, and I think that we have to be prepared for that. I think that the, one of the best things that we can do from the perspective of power and making powerful decisions and feeling empowered is to be prepared for how difficult this is and the value 
of having really great boundaries and uh, and learning to nurture our own boundary setting because it's not popular and it's not easy and sometimes it's just not fun. Like sometimes it would just be easier to say, you know, uh, I'm gonna go for it to hell with the consequences. I don't give a shit. Um, I'm gonna do this because I, I because saying no would be too difficult. So, you know, just my hope is that we can all find that strength in ourselves and, and glean that strength from one another when we are at those intersections where we are being asked to make a difficult decision. And, and I think the way that they frame this and Christy and Adrian both were talking about the book, which I guess goes into much more detail as books do, um, but just the beauty and the quality of healing that can happen when we do the thing that in the moment seems unpopular or when we do the thing that is really difficult because, you know, we can't imagine, you know, it's like you were saying, nausea, like we cannot imagine or reimagine from a state of chaos and, um, and defensiveness and uh, in a place where we're not taking any personal responsibility you know, I think that power comes from personal responsibility and us being able to like stand in the wake of what that means to be powerful women, you know, which um, even now in 2020 is not the most popular position to take, but yet here we are. And I am so happy to be here with all of you tonight. This is just such, whew, it's been a while. Yeah, I feel like it's been a while. So uh, yeah, I'm so <laughs> grateful. Now, now it's my dog's nausea. Um, but I'm going to uh, end with that and just ask if anybody else um, just wants to take a moment. It is 637, so I want to be mindful of our time um, and just say a thank you to all of you and to our amazing guest, Naja, and uh, just open it up one more time to see if anybody has a quick share or if if there's anything else that we can do for you before we sign off for the night. Okay. Naja. I just want to just thank you for having me. I, I, I love just talking about things that make us think that uh, help support us being the most whole, you know, um, women in this world of ours. And so I love being here with you and thank you for everyone who showed up. Uh, I would love to stay in touch. Um, and, uh, and we have to do this again because there's never enough time for these kinds of conversations. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued, my friend. I was actually thinking maybe that should be the name of the podcast, To Be Continued. <laughs> to Be Continued, exactly. I love, that should be our podcast. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Indeed. Well, everyone, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you with uh, with a quote that I uh, that I use in in this show, which I absolutely love, um, and it's from one of my absolute favorite writers. And he says, "Some people think the truth is the worst thing that can happen. The truth is not the worst thing that can happen." So with that, my loves, go out, be truthful, be brave, be courageous, and do what you love. I'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Naja. Thank you.